what a day <laughs> we've been having technical issues for the past 30 minutes but we thank god i'm finally here and you know i'm very excited about doing this topic today because it's one of my highlights and um, don't mind my eye movements i'm streaming on facebook and on youtube simultaneously using two devices um the 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 device we wanted to use was was supposed to do it seamlessly but you know tech has its own part of it so just make do with it and just listen and trust me you're going to have Ouch, sorry about that. Give me a second. Okay, yes, so we're all good and ready. We can't be stopped because we are rugged. You know what I mean. <laughs> we are rugged, yes. And even though we're teaching the teenagers that they need to um, grow up having the ability to withstand pressure, to bounce back when they're stressed, to resist hindrances and roadblocks and bumps, we too get to go through these things every day. So welcome here. My name is Auntie Etima. I'm the exceptional teen coach. My, my, my girls call me Queen Mother. The teenagers and delegates at Ignite Bootcamp call me Commandant. And um, generally, I'm known as that teen mentor, that consultant that you need to speak with when it has to do with teenagers, either as a parent, an organization, or a family. So today, very interesting topic. But before we delve in, I want to say welcome to you. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome. If you're on YouTube, welcome. I greet you here. And even though you're catching a replay, I celebrate you. If you can hear me, please say something in the comment section so that I know that I'm not speaking to myself. I see two people already on Facebook. I see more people joining on YouTube. Thank you so much. Yes, this is the time to call your friends to say, oh, more. you better get in here because I'd rather you have this talk show with me now than you come later when there is a problem because I will bill you and I'll you you with smiles you know what i'm saying because you got a chance to make it right on your journey raising teenagers is not a joke neither is it a walk in the park it's a lot of hard work and i want you to understand that you don't have a choice you gotta do that hard work you don't do it now you gotta do it later and unfortunately when you're doing it later you have lost time so you're gonna try to get time and of course money now let's go straight into our topic for today please if you can hear me let me know you can hear me tell me where you're watching me from i want to celebrate you because really you're going to spend your next few minutes with me and i don't take it for granted all right so let's go i'm going to start with the, with the, with my experience with the teenagers you know at our events you know, aside doing this work I'm doing online, I'm also working actively offline. I run the Teens Boot Camp Ignite in August, the Teens Easter Camp in April. And then, of course, monthly mentoring sessions for those in Abuja. And every time that we're having these programs, especially the camps, especially the camps, because, you know, the camps, you're keeping them for five for five days stretch or at, you know at once and that is when you have you have put them under some sort of pressure they usually would um react so you you get them to stand for 10 minutes they're squeezing they're they are, they are unable to they are bending they want to sit they're already giving you this body language like hurry up ma Ma, please hurry up. We are tired. Our back is spinning. Our leg is, is squeezing. Our hand is... I mean, you have them squeeze their faces for being under the sun for a few minutes. They are grumbling because lunch is late. They are, they, they, are, they, they are in a bad mood because you woke them up early for an activity. 
these are all signs of a child that is delicate a child that needs to be according to one parent on buttered when i said children that were not that were not rugged were are butters were just like butter itself and then she said we need to own butter them and i agree and we have them a lot when they come to camp their parents are rolling their boxes their parents are saying can i see where they are sleeping can i see what they are eating can parents have even asked me for the menu of their children they're like oh even the children themselves are saying to me why can't we eat pizza why can't and i'm like who are these ones for goodness sake the boot camp is an avenue for you to be to be pushed left right center and you will not die we have run six editions we have not even had one person faint and yet we have made them rugged <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me excuse me let me get water so this idea that oh my child <coughs> excuse me cannot leave my child will not cope my child is going to suffer the way this entity my sound is wants to kill my child for me <clears throat> excuse me don't worry your child will be fine <clears throat> excuse me just like all the other children are fine now to be rugged because some people are like what's all this rugged talk all about to be rugged is to be strong to not be easily broken to be able to endure plus experience uncomfortable unpleasant circumstances hello peace how are you doing thank you so much for joining me that's what it means to be strong you, you don't come and tell me oh this my child was born premature what does that mean this child is 13 14 15 17 i've seen even 18 delicate and butterish i have seen 13 years old 12 years old unable to sit they can't sit for 45 minutes without standing up they're tired meanwhile they're not the one teaching they are not the one they are not the one doing any activity they're just sitting and listening but they're even tired of sitting have you seen where a, a a delicate child sleeps and wakes up and tells you that he's tired i'm tired of sleeping tired of resting no form of ruggedity rugidity. why to bring up a child that is strong means that that child must go through circumstances that are not soft i'm sorry today i mean i'm gonna just ruffle people's hair i mean you know that emoji that just pulls your head pulls your hair off so i don't know if somebody's going to have hair you might be bad after this class because as i'm speaking to you i'm speaking to you as it is i'm not going to quote anything i'm dealing with the children and i'm telling you the aftermath of your not bringing up children to be rugged we went to camp everybody because on camp you're not expected to walk you're supposed to be doubling bah, 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 throughout by day two some people want to leave some people don't want to come and they want to just sleep. No, they don't want to leave but they don't want to come into the activities so you start seeing them i'm not feeling well i'm not feeling well when you take them to the doctor all they give them is vitamin c and water and they are fine nothing was wrong with them from the beginning how did they say it in in is it italy or french it, it, open up an issue <laughs> something like that nothing wrong with them they are just not used to following a regimented lifestyle or pattern that discipline of stand up go here go now there's a problem with with it for some teenagers you see that go now and go fast they have a problem with it they want to go when they like and how they like you can't raise a rugged teenager that way and that's because at home that's what happens your child can eat when they like how they like some of them are eating for one hour 30 minutes they are still eating a small plate of food 
I will say, Auntie Tima, that's how he is. She has always been like that since from when I've delivered her. No, you're gradually raising a non rugged adult that will constantly expect the world to be at his or her beck and call. That's a very big problem. You know how many people were in the world? Billions of people. Everybody should stand still because your child needs to eat. Because your child needs to sleep. Everywhere should be quiet. Peace and tranquility because your child needs to sleep. Oh, your child is, you're not happy. You know, some parents will see the video and say, why is my child not appearing in any of the videos? And my question is, why is your child at the back? Some children just naturally want to be at the back. Why? They're not able to push their way through to the front. Are you going to follow your child to all the queues your child is going to be on? I mean, your child is going to go to university. They're going to be on a long queue. Your child is going to have transactions in the bank. It's going to be on a long queue. Your child is going to go to an office needing a service. He or she is going to have to be on a long queue. For how long and for how many times and how many places are you going to keep going to say, no, please, Bring my child to the front. He has been here for two hours. Your child does not know how to navigate his way to the front in a proper way. At the last boot camp, Easter camp, that was just two weeks ago. I'm sorry I have to share this story. A girl wanted to use the restroom. 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 And they went to the restroom. The pathway to the restroom was, you know, teenagers were all in front of that place. So, she looked at me, and she didn't speak, but she, 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 she gave me this look like, Auntie Tima, how am I going to pass through those teenagers to the restroom? And I gave her the look like, you're going to wee on your body. You will wee wee, dear. When you finish wee wee, dear, dear, like they say in worry, dear, you will go back and sit down with the wee wee clothes, because I'm not calling your mama. I didn't talk. She understood my look. She spoke to herself. and she, I, Before I turned, she was back. I didn't bother asking her, so how did you scale through? Did they bite you? Did they, did they, what did they do? What did they do to you? Did they attack you? Why? She's not able to be ruffled. To be rugged is to allow yourself to be ruffled. They will push you. You will adjust. Mm, you will pass. You will come out straight. No soft life. No easy life. Rugged. I remember when I, I, now I'm thinking about it, when I was going through my own school of ruggedity. My parents that had drivers, both my mother and my father, thinking about it now, both had official cars with drivers. They would send more and my siblings to use public transport. And I don't know how whether it was that they didn't know how much it was, but we always didn't have enough. So we always had to sit by the engine. You know the engine? Those of you that were born in the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. You know the engine, the back of the driver, that engine place is for those that their money is not complete. It's for those whose money is not complete. Now, because we were three, the money is still not complete for the engine. So my elder sister who was my cousin will lap will lap my sister my younger sister and then i would sit beside her and that's how we find our way and my parents will not even ask it was not a traumatic experience it was a training ground oh you can relate you know what i'm talking about but ma today drivers must drop our children open the door for them and your child will not as much as say thank you sir or ma why no in fact when he's in the car it's like the ac is not on mr mike why is this place hot he will even be squeezing face and giving attitude with comfort that he's experiencing and you want your child to be rugged you're not telling be rugged you must be rugged you're using you, you don't you don't teach ruggedity they experience it ruggedity is a training that must be experienced with no form of softness, no form of ease or comfort. You take it out for a little time, it's not for long. It's just a bit, I mean, I was not going, sitting on that bus forever. It was just a few years, it was just a few months, it was just a term sometimes that I, I went through that. But it helped me 
Today, I can start the comfort of a, of any kind of car. And I know that even when I don't have a car, I can jump down and find my way. You're delaying me. I went to enter bike. But I even learned how to do makeup in university on a bike. You guys don't understand the kind of ruggedity I've gone through. And I'm okay. Am I not living a soft life now? Yes, I am. But will my children just jump from the womb to a soft life? No. It's called attachment, sir. Sir, you know the name. That is the name. Attachment. I've gone to Lagos from Abuja. No, from Calabar to Lagos. Attachment. You know, not the regular night bus, not the bus seat, that comfy one. No. Attachment. I've, 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 I've gone through all sorts. I've gone through all sorts. So if, I, if, if, if I'm called a commandant, please allow me to enjoy my role as commandant because I know what I've been through. I can also help you make your children rugged. And by the way, I was a butter child. I was supposed to be a butter child. Like I said, both my parents were working in places where we had drivers we had assets my house our house at the staff quarters then was the only house with a gardener and drivers and cooks so at a point i was not understanding the whole calculation for my parents like how do we have all this comfort to a large extent and they were suffering like this i remember taking my sister to enugu unek to get her to gain to do her admission we still argue about it. She says she went and found her admission herself. But I said I was with her. But at least I remember going with her alone for her matriculation. Only two of us. My parents were chilling in Calabar. No phones. They, they were never worried. Honestly, my parents, I need to give it to them. My mom will say, I've prayed for you. You are okay. Nothing can happen to you. And truly, nothing ever happened to us. First of all, we don't look kidnappable. Second of all, we don't look like we're confused. Third of all, we look like we know what we're doing. We are bold, we're confident, we keep ourselves company and we're moving. That was how we built rugidity, rugidity in us. That's how it was built in us. So I want to take down the following point as how you can identify somebody that is rugged. It's not by telling me. You don't tell me, Ma, these things you're saying, my child can do all, no. I can look at your child and know if your child is rugged or would be rugged. A, a rugged child can be seen by the way you look, the way you act. When you're not easily tired, you are rugged. The way you talk, the way you walk, the way you even make choices in a slow way or in a scared way. I can tell if you're rugged. Some teenagers walk 50 meters per minute. They are still walking. They are just going from here to there. But they are walking and walking it down. It, why? Do you know that the way you walk, the, the, the speed in your walking can tell me if you are rugged. And that's how you know children that can be kidnapped. I feel like standing up to give this, this description of how... That's why we teach them on camp. Even on, on camp, we tell you how to walk. You walk smartly. That's that's somebody that is rugged. You can't be doing. You're walking now, but this is how you're walking. Your child is walking like this. He's walking like he's going to fall, like he's going to faint. That child is not rugged. Don't tell me that the child is rugged, ma. If you know what they go through in my house, but no, I can see it by the way they walk. I remember the first day I was giving my son this lesson, <laughs> thinking about it now. My son and I were just coming from my tailor's place. And my tailor's place then was a mall close to the market. Those of you in Abuja, my, my tailor's place was um, close to Garki Market, a mall by the road. And I looked at my son. My son was just walking like this and kicking, you know, kicking stones and looking to the ground and just there and then I gave him that lecture. I say, my friend you walking like somebody that they can just grab into this car. When you walk, you don't kick stones. Your head must be up. You're looking around confidently. You're aware of the cars, who is in what car, who is coming behind you. So you're walking with your head tall, not distractedly or daydreamishly. Some children are walking absent-mindedly and you say that child is rugged. That child is not rugged. 
If you're rugged, I'll see the by your steps. I will see. By the way you, you maintain eye contact, I will tell that you are rugged. Some of them are looking like this. Your child cannot be rugged with that face. Mm -mm. There's a face of it. If you check the definition of rugged, it means hard, hard face. I shared a story yesterday of how I took my children to a site. I was going to see, I think it was my husband. My husband was working on the site. My husband does work, you know, he's an engineer, an energy engineer. So he was installing, um, you know, CCTV and stuff like that on his site. So I went with my children to see him. And one of the guys on site, I went with my children and an acquaintance, two children. And the man said, okay, Oga, who are your children? You know, my husband pointed, he said, I, I know. And I was like, why? He said, because these ones are looking like butter. I can tell from the way they look, they look too soft. Why should your child be, be identified as soft from the way they look? They look like they want to cry. They look like, oh, they're not happy. They look like they're suffering. Ability to withstand uncomfortable, unpleasant circumstances without showing it is a sign of a rugged child. They are hungry, but they are not showing it. Have you seen when we delay their food and it's intentional on camp? Sometimes we intentionally delay their food because we want to push them, push their limits. Some of them, in fact, the, the volunteers and the mentors will be shouting, and their team additional and say, be coming down. Nobody's dying. They will be fine. So those of them that have come to camp two, three times, they are now used to it. When food is delayed, they start singing. That is it. You start, they start singing. They start drumming. They start gisting. The energy in the room is high. When we started it, delay food, it will be as if it's a graveyard. I said, for what? For what? Are you, are you Esau? Esau, because of his stomach, gave out his birthright. It's not to share this Bible story, so it's to push them through the process. So now when food is delayed, the energy is high in the room. I say, you guys, oh, Garrett. <laughs> Check it, the way they talk. You tell them, guys, the hot water is not working. Let's find an alternative. They say, no. He said, I don't know, but everybody else is like, okay, let's do this. Let's do that. Let they are not ready to take any form of risk. They are not ready to go out of their comfort zone. When I make an announcement like, guys, I'm waking you guys up. Tomorrow we're having midnight prayers some will clap Woo! others will just it will be as if they, they want to burst i told them from this morning devotion we're going out to do our prayer walk ah some of them may talk what is prayer walk wow must we walk you mean i tell you how many minutes 30 minutes oh, 30 minutes i'm going to be walk uh 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 -uh. and you say your child is rugged no your child is not rugged that way meanwhile you don't know when something will go wrong and that child will need to take long walks but you cannot walk for long without because driver used to drive and come to your to this to the doorstep and pick them and even carry bag mary will bring the bag from the kitchen with the food made then Joseph will now collect it and put it in the car, open the door, child will enter, sit down. Back up, no straight. The child cannot even walk. In fact, if we had cars that could enter houses, some people will buy. And they will tell you that, please, I suffered though. Do you know how many kilometers I walked and said, Tim, as a child, I walked for 10 kilometers. Allow me to, uh, to let my child come, <laughs> allow him to have some comfort. God will help us as we help these children. Now, ruggedity is essential for both girls and boys. But the consequences of, of not being rugged is actually felt more by boys. Boys are the ones that actually suffer most. It's not like girls don't. It's not like I'm saying don't make your girls rugged. No. But I'm saying that the effect, because a boy is a leader. He's going to grow to be a man, a father. How is he going to drive his family? How is he going to drive his organization? How is he going to drive the, drive the nation when he cannot drive himself? The other day I saw a parent driving a 20-year-old boy. Hey, me that my son is 14. I'm even counting down. On his birthday, I still put it up. 
I can't wait for you to start driving. The moment my first child, who is a girl, turns 18, I've resigned from driving. I've resigned from, unless they are not around. Once they're around, I can't drive. I will sit at the back and drive you like I drove you. You will drive me like I drove you all through your primary school and secondary school. You know where my children's school? We drive all the way. Go, come, go, come. Then one child will now be 20 years sitting down playing music. And that child will be rugged. How? You will enter Kekena Pep. I don't know what it's called in other cities. In Abuja, it's called Kekena Pep. Abroad, I'm sure it's called Tricycle. You will enter that thing. Mm -mm, that's where you will enter. Sit, eh, the, the man is dirty. Sit with him. He's not, he's not, he doesn't have leprosy. He's only dead. Please. For the girls, ruggedity can be seen when they are not, maybe not physically, you know, maybe they are not like able to carry cement. I carry all those heavy things. But we see ruggedity in a girl when she's determined and courageous, when she's ready to carry out difficult tasks, when things are tough and she's okay. That's how you know that a girl is rugged. Now, what are the risks and the consequences of, you know, this whole butter, delicate parenting that we're doing with our children these days? Number one, they'll keep depending on you. For me, this is the worst of all the consequences. For me, this is the reason why I, I can make my mind strong. I cannot, I cannot bear to see a child not a child now, to see an adult depend on me. That my 20-year-old, my 25-year-old will be calling me on the phone when I'm around the world, speaking, making impact, fulfilling purpose. One child, one adult child will now call me, mommy, I don't understand what they're telling me in the bank. Daddy, I, I, I don't understand. For me, that dependency is a problem for me. And, and and I heard my mom constantly say while growing up, I want you to be independent. I want you to be independent. When people argue about day school and and um, boarding school, this is one of the, the, the strongest points for boarding school. And if your child, I've seen people like in day school try to breach this gap by not dropping their children in school, even though they are day students. That's a good one. I see them try to bring the boarding school system into their home. If you're not doing that, don't worry. You're not, you can't, you can't raise a, you can't raise a, a non-rugged child now because you drop them, you pick them, you can do everything you're doing for them. But if they're at home as day students and you're still trying to create a system where they can be independent, I think I'll give it to you. But if not, don't worry. You see all this talk of how many years do I have with them? Very soon they'll leave me. They'll leave you as what? As a delicate, butter child that will be spoiled. And do you know that these are the people that courts is look out for? I've had sessions with former court people because of my teenagers. I needed to know what it is that they look out for in a person. Because how come they are pressuring some people to join court? There is the advertor. There is the personality of a person that they will lure into a court group. Call girls, there's a personality, there's how they look, there's how they behave. This is one of them. When you come in looking butterish, it's okay, this one needs, needs people, even though they will bully him, even though they will harass him. So they try to lure you into their group. So when you're raising a child, like one I met recently, we we're going for an event, his mom was there, and there were all of all the, the us, other of us. And they said, hey, teenagers, stand behind the back of a teacher. And he went to stand behind his mother's back. Ah, the way I yanked him out from that back. The way I yanked him, because he's tall, he's big. I yanked him, my friend, will you leave your mother's? What are you doing there? Come to another person. That's it. You now raise a child that is always dependent and always clingy. How would that child be creative? How would that child be innovative? How would that child push the limits, try to break through barriers to fulfill his own purpose? Do you think your child was born to be your child? <laughs> That's not the purpose of your child. Not to make you a mother or a father, no. Your child was, that's not his purpose. Your child came to solve a problem on this earth. 
So if your child is not brought up to solve that problem, to fulfill that purpose, sir, ma, you have failed. That's the real failure of parenting. That your child is not able to fulfill purpose. That's why the Bible says, bring up in the way that he should go. He's supposed to be going on a particular way. And guess what? On that way, it's not easy. Same Bible says that the way to, is it eternity or to life? The way to life, eternal life, is rough and narrow. But the way to destruction and condemnation is what? Bible student is what? Repeat after me. You say what? Is wide and smooth. When you like smooth life, soft life, you're leading your child to destruction. But you see that rough and narrow, slim, uncomfortable, sometimes in lack, in need, your child needs to pass there. That's why he's going to fulfill purpose in and he's going to be a star following that way. But you see the white, smooth, he can't, he can't end up well. I have personal stories to share. Family members that when we're growing up, they'll protect their children from stress. They'll corner them. They'll, 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 when they give tasks, they'll corner their child to the back and pet their child. Don't worry, don't mind all this. Don't mind. They'll pet, they'll give, they'll take from their own, give them. All of us are supposed to fast. You corner your child, give him food and say, clean your mouth, go, don't worry, they want to keep my child for me. All those things. Ask me where they are today. Nowhere. You can't find them because this world was not built for smoothness and comfort. This world was not built that way. Somebody was saying under my post that check Jimovia and the rest. All their children are going, they, 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 they intentionally put their children through some form of rigor. I know somebody in Abuja, one of the well-to-do, one of the biggest schools ever. She'll, she'll bring up her children in a particular way. When they finish, they'll school abroad, university. When they finish, you will come back here, they'll come and do NYC. When they try to call on the for mommy, there's no place where we can do, they do. She'll say, do it while other people are doing it. Mm, you need nylon. She transported nylon from Abuja to Nasarawa State, where one of them served, in one tick village. But you rescue, redeploy. My child cannot stay in Nassau State. My child cannot stay. My, my child. Your child is doing NYC inside your house. Your child did primary school, secondary school, university inside your house. And you say, I'm protecting. My job is to protect. Who told you? Your job is to parent. God's job is to protect. Your child can be attacked inside that your house. In this Abuja, in Lagos, anywhere. Your child can be attacked anywhere. Your child can be attacked at the airport. Your child can be attacked in the US, in the UK. So stop this and I want to protect. Protect is for the child, of, for the benefit of the child. And then you're now raising a child that cannot withstand any form of pressure. They're not helping God. They're not helping us. Because we need the content and the solutions in that child. All of us plus me. I need it. We all need it. Now, let's go to other risk. I'm going to just run through it. Your child will start dodging and avoiding taking calculated risk that is required for growth and success in life. If your child is used to too much comfort, the moment he's supposed to take a risk and stand on his own, how will you grow? Everybody knows that to become a success in life, you must take risk calculated risk look at a child that wants to walk he tries to stand he's afraid if i stand i'll fall but he needs to stand and fall to be able to walk he needs to stand and fall hit his head cry to be able to progress and advance it's the same thing with life principle if your child must succeed in life your child must take the risk of entering public transport jumping bike so that he will not be late for that interview that he's going to if you have to wait for driver to come that child will miss it and that's it too many exams that children are missing why they are afraid of going through the rigor of reading for that tough exam do you know how many teenagers have done counseling on on instagram 
And they think my jam is tomorrow. I'm afraid. I cannot. That's it. Because this and these children talking to me, I know the families they are coming from. Families that they do everything for them. Now it's time for them to step out and take a difficult exam, as it were, like jam. They can't. They are afraid. That's what you get when you raise a delicate child. What else? They fear failure. How can you succeed in life without failing? It's not possible. Please don't even let anybody deceive you. Yes, our pastors will prophesy, confess. You will be the head and not the tail. You will succeed and not fail. You will, they say all those things. True. How be it? You will go through failure in this life. Failure is a teacher. And God expects us to learn through our experiences and the experiences of others. If those people didn't fail, how will your child learn? If your child didn't fail, how will he learn that if you don't read, you don't pass? Because you pay for exams for them. You pay for every, everything. Pay, pay. It's like who has money is the one that is raising a child. What does that mean? You're doing a disservice to your child. Allow them fail. Let them start a business and fail. Don't say you 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 just put all my money in the in the pit. Yes, they will first fail first. It's better for them to fail without your money now than for them to collect your inheritance. Hey, all your inheritance, all your landed property. One child will just carry everything because he has never done business before. He just carry it mm, down the drain. Let him fail with. 50k 20k before you give them 100 million some of some parents say things like what am i working for i'm just working for my children she have told the people that children should understand that your money is your money your money is your money it's not their money all this what am i working for i'm working to give you everything i'm working for that is what causes children to be in a club burning five million naira in a night not that they told me i saw they are burning it in a night. Why? It is not their money. Nobody burns their money. My children have opportunity to come and work with me. You see that they are stipend I give them. Don't touch one naira out. They even told me recently that, mommy, we don't want transfer. We want cash. We want it. We want to sit. We want to touch it. Tell them that they should use 200, 750 from their money and buy bread. They will squeeze face. But they will take your 5 million, 3 million and burn it. Why? It didn't work. What else is the consequence? They assume that comfort zone is a natural habitat that they cannot live out of. The moment there's stress, they can't stay there. They go to a house, there's no light, there's no AC, there's no bed, there's no this, they cannot stay. There's no shower, no pizza, no, they, no ice cream, no, they can't stay. What else? They begin to have a complex. You see this low self-confidence? It comes from not being able to do things yourself. I have seen it on camp now. It's not what they are telling me. It's not what I read on Google. I noticed that the first set of children to settle into camp are those that can find their way and navigate their way around. They just enter. Where is this? What are we to do? Those are the ones that settle in. The other ones are the ones in like this. What are they doing? When, when is it time for us? I, I, I miss my mommy. I miss my dad. This person is 17 years. I miss my mommy. I miss my dad. This person is 13 years. Uh -uh. Your child will have a complex. Because you know why? His peers will be able to do these things. He cannot. There was a day around, you know, that kind of around, but not around. This one will say, I can find my way to Wuse Market. The other one will say, ah, no, are you serious? No, yeah, I can find my way at least to Wuse too. The other one will say, ah, I can find my way to. The ones that could not find their way wanted to enter the ground. They were looking so embarrassed. One of them, later, I was not having a conversation. Said, but you, why can't you find your way? He said, my parents will not allow me. I said, Tima, they don't even let me cross the road to buy something across the road from Malam. Wow. And you now say, this child, after all I've done for you, can't you have self-confidence? They cannot have self-confidence. Self-confidence comes from action, from doing things, from being rugged, from overcoming difficult situations. That's when you now have confidence. That's why I can tell you that I am, I, I, that's why I'm very self-confident. I can tell you that I'm a commandant that is tested and trusted. Why? I've gone through the process. 
Where do you want to try me? In which area? Is it in going to a new city? Is it in going to... I did all my back to school shopping myself. Not one did my mom follow me. Her job is to give me how much is your list. Strike out, strike in, strike out. Take, take your money. Where I shop, how I shop, she doesn't check any. If you like, forget batting soap. I was in Calabar. My school was in Joss. No phone. Who is coming to bring you soap? The thing made me to be a very mindful child. All this, my child is always forgetting things. I cannot forget. If I forget, I'm in trouble. So some of the complaints that we have, we cost it by not putting these children through the process. What else? And finally, for this, they, are, they, have, they, are, they, are, they are unable to earn or grow income. They are unable to earn or grow. Even when they earn, they can't grow it. Because to, to grow, even in business, hey, you need to be rugged. You will go to a place to tell you no. You will go, you come back, you will go, you come back. If you're here and you're saying, you're, my child is not going to be a doctor. I've seen doctors struggling. You know? We had a family friend that suffered, like he was a doctor, suffered. Can't make money. Every time he's on call, he can't do business. My child is going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or any profession, any profession your child is doing. There is the business of it. If your child cannot do it, your child will not earn money. If you like leaving 100 billion, that money will finish in a little time. As the prodigal son, my favorite Bible story, blew his father's money, his father's money in a few days, weeks, months, even if it's a few years to still finish. All this one that the money that this man has stolen, his children can never lack forever and ever. Who told you, Gen Z? Do you want to try Gen Z? How much of the most expensive wine in our time? Go now and go and see how much is wine. They will open it, scatter it everywhere. 2.5 million. Something that you will work for three months, you won't get. One child will all blow it in a few seconds. Is it designer bags and shoes? You guys don't try this Gen Z. They know how to blow money. So you better teach them how to earn it. There's one more. They will struggle with spiritual growth. They will struggle with a good lifestyle. Because <laughs> my children today is fasting in our church. Fast. My children will do okay, they'll fast, but they will do like they want to fall. But you will fast that fast. Now, my son was ill, and the medication he was taking asked him not to eat till 3:30. I said, Good. But I used to tell you people to fast. And since from childhood, my children always fast. You'll be complaining with one mouth. Oh, you know, this, this fasting moment is always moment only too much. It's too much. Now the medication says don't eat. Are you going to die? You just had that's the thing. You don't even know where your child will need these things. So your child cannot grow spiritual because to, to be a child of God is not easy. To pray, you need to be rugged to pray. You can't be lying and say you are praying. You will stand. You will make declarations. You will walk. To praise, is it easy? These are all the things we put them through on camp and they'll be like, and the team want to kill us. They are not dying. You'll be very, very okay. Even the lifestyle. Exercise is not easy. How many teenagers exercise? It will be as if you want to kill them. They just want to sit and watch a movie, play a game. Ha. Okay, let's go to the main point and then I'm going to end here, which is how do we raise a rugged child beginning from today? Like time T now. What and what can I do? I don't want to be I don't want it to be something that you think about for too long. Just start from this minute. Number 1, give your child age appropriate as well as older age appropriate tasks. A big, a bit tougher than them. Don't. I, I'm not saying you should carry cement and put on your son's head and say, "My friend, carry this cement now." This and this what the team has said. No. But something that he can, that will need him to stretch, that will need her to stretch a bit. Give her that task. They say it's only adults that can cook party food. It's not true. Your child is used to cooking only three cups of rice. Let her cook eight cups. The stirring, the mixing is not going to be easy. Before, when I was teaching my children how to cook, they used to cook in just one small pot because I don't want 
rubbish food for the whole house. Now, if you like, rubbish the whole big pot of food. All of us will eat it like that. So give them something bigger, a bit more difficult. I remember seeing a boy, I think that boy was like four years old, washing car with his dad. That was about three years ago. Every morning when I'm doing my work, myself and my husband, we'll just be looking at this child. He couldn't do much. He would just hold the hose for his dad and everything. This boy is seven now. I can't remember when last I saw his dad. Then it was looking like, why will a four-year-old be washing car? Look at how he's even holding the sponge. Have you seen him now? He's now an expert. Some of us, our children don't even wash our cars. I remember the day I made trouble with my son. He said, did you, did you teach me? Did you show me? Did you tell me? I say, hey, 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 I'm sorry, sir. Car washing 101, begin. Begin this minute. So give them a task that is a bit tougher for them. Don't be saying when he's 25. What does that mean? Let him start from when he's 13. Yesterday, my friend, Coach Wendy, her son was on my husband's site. Like I said, he's an engineer. The boy was bending iron. I said, correct boy, he's just 13. He's just 13. And an 18 year old cannot straighten iron. You say, I don't want it to be an iron bender. I don't want it to be a carpenter. My sister runs a furniture company. Her office has been slated as one of the places that my children will go to. If you like, go and hit the nail on your finger. We will not sit with hot water. You will be all right. Very, very all right. You now say, no, it's too small. It's too much for his age. Who told you? Do you know the energy these children have? I can't wait to resign from being the commandant and just and just, and just just stroll into camp as queen mother. I will even wear a crown. I won't wear my boots. I will come with a crown. One of them is standing around here. I've told her you're going to be a commandant. Yes. I will come into Ghana. I'll come to your camp and you'll be in charge. You'll be wearing boots like I'm wearing now. Me, I'll be with a crown. You will do something that is bigger than you. That's how to raise a rugged child. What else can you do? Don't rescue too quickly. They are struggling. Allow them a bit. Allow them first. Let them carry. Let it fall. Let them cry. Let it fall. Let them cry. Let it fall. Then you now come and help. Don't just rush. Oh, quickly. Why? Don't rescue if they are not dying. This is another point. If you, as long as this child is not dying, please leave them. Those of them in boarding house. Before they will even call you, they, you have appeared. You have appeared. This child is not dying now. There was once my friend's child was ill. You know, so we called him. Because they understand this principle, they asked key questions. Is it this? Any fever? Any Daniela? He's fine. Just handle him the way you're treating others let this let the camp nurse treat him and he the child was the next day sent a picture of this boy playing football this father would have been running from his office to come and rescue when the child was not dying if a child is not dying please leave them leave them what else can you do don't bail out at all you see this bailout bailout is different from rescuing <laughs> let me explain the difference rescue you're trying to help bail out you are taking over mm, that's the difference yeah bail out you don't even allow them suffer the consequences you just take over let me die for my child that's why i delivered him my son claire let me die let me take bullets for you oh my son your child is expelled from his school you bail him out you don't allow him to stay at home small and let the time finish you quickly go and pay extra money in another school, a bigger, more expensive school. Some of you, you take them from uh, from from Uni Abuja, Uni Lag. You move them abroad. A child that was expelled, uh, rusti rusticated. You move him out. He has not suffered any consequence. That kind of child should go and work in your mechanic shop. Mm -hmm. your, that mama put down the road. That's where that child is supposed to be. Because you have only two options: to go to school, pass, do well, or to end up like this. So, for you to prove to that child that you mean it, let that child go there. When you work with your mechanics, more your debt is more. When they send you to a school, even if it's that school abroad, the child will go there with sense. Just come, you bail out. When you even be lying, 
When they say, oh, why is he at home? When he was just having, he was trying to change his school. This school, I don't like what they are doing. He, they expelled him. He was expelled. He was expelled. Don't worry, you go for counseling and therapy so that it doesn't affect his mind. And he's a, he will go for therapy. But you see this bailout. You will not bail out any child. I watched a family member bail out her son. As I speak to you, his marriage is broken. His business has failed. His life is upside down because his mom was constantly bailing out. He's my only child. He's my only girl. He's my only boy. Every child is a child in the eyes of God. God does not have only children, only boy, only girl. Every child, no child is a grandchild. Every child is God's child. So stop making your child look like there's a reason why you should be bailed out. Child is a, I've seen C class do better than children that are AA. They are SSO. They have sickle cell, but if you see their ruggedity, your child is full fledged. Nothing is wrong with him. AA, genotype, um, what's the other one? Blood group, everything okay, but this child cannot do more than a fly. There's a way to say it in secondary school, I've forgotten it. Cannot do more than a stinking mosquito. You cannot do anything. Unfortunate. What else can you do? Send them to others, people that you can test that you have tested and trusted, so that they can they can be in less comfort zones. You know, you know how you will send your child to your sister's place. In that house, there's no AC. In that house, no shawarma every Friday, no pizza, nothing. They just eat Ijebu Gari and granite, and they're very okay. No Netflix, no PS4, nothing. Send them there. Send them there. That your friend that is not well to do, does not have driver like you. Her children enter. Send them there to do one weekend. You are you are, you are drilling them. That's the drill. What else can you do? Holiday jobs. Those of you that are in my in the academy, you, you have girls. At the girls' hub, all our girls from age seven, because that's the lowest class, seven to nine, they're all doing holiday jobs, no matter how small. Pick all the pick all the needles here. You're a tailor, pick all the needles here, put all the buttons here. That's job. Pay her 200 naira a day. So all my girls, they must pay them. They are all doing jobs. And it's a, it's a rule at the girls' hub. Every holiday, your daughter must do a holiday job, even if it's four. The list is five days. And they must get paid, no matter how small. So let them do holiday jobs. Like I said, my son is going to go to my sister's furniture factory and, 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 and do woodwork. Don't come and tell me that I want to be an engineer, I want to be a footballer, I want to be a basketballer, I want to be a doctor, lawyer. You cannot, you will go there. You will go to a restaurant. In fact, all the industries, you touch a bit of all, which is my next point. Let your children do tours to sites, aside just walking. Let them go around to factories, to workshops, to sites. Let them, they let, I want, I want me, let our next house, let our next house be a duplex. Do they know how they build duplex? Do they know? Do they know how they build a mall? Let them go there. Let them go and see how things are being created. What else can you do? Intercity travels, public transports. Mm -hmm. Your child will not die, he will not be kidnapped, he will not be lost. Let them enter, jump along. Teach them that when you get there, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. Is how to teach them, make them rugged. What else can they do? Travel. Oh, travel is one of the most effective ways of being rugged, of teaching a child to be rugged. Let them travel. A girl was 10 years old last year. She came all the way from Benin. Her parents are, I mean, an average parent. 10 years old. Facebook, when I posted it, my timeline was going to explode. What? Oh, even those are abroad. We're shouting, hey, if it was now, it was in the UK. You'll be arrested. It's not true. We followed the process. She was registered and handed over to the airline. The airline would not release her until I came with my ID card to sign her out. And we did the same thing. You cannot take away that girl's experience. You can't take it away. If you like, send your child to the school of 10 million. That school cannot be compared to that experience 
of being on a 45 minutes flight without mommy, daddy, or auntie Tima. That one, now if I send her to go and become commandant of Canada, do you think she will send her to me? How will I start? She will just move. She will just move. She, she was 10 when she started her journey. And finally, of course, you know what to do. Send your children to boot camps. After school, the next most important place for your child's growth and development is a boot camp. And this time around, we are coming to Lagos. We are going to Port Harcourt. We are here in Abuja. Even online, the online delegates have a rigorous, <laughs> not so sweet activity. When they wake up, the exercises they do online, the games they play. So you don't have any excuse to say that your child will not be rugged this year or start his journey into this matter. Let these children travel. Go from Benin to Port Harcourt for camp now. That one you can go with your child because of the roads in Nigeria. You can go from Benin. When you get to Benin, chill in your friend's house. Eat, enjoy, take a break. Let your child be on camp. When you finish, go back. By the time you do it twice, your child can travel alone. This traveling is a very good way of making your child rugged. Another thing I left out is going to the open markets. Some of you, all your shopping is inside shop right. I'm sorry to mention. It's inside departmental stores where there's AC. Your child will go and buy cocoa yam and that fan with water leaf inside AC shop. Your child, if I ask, I ask your parents, her children were, her children were, was it 13 years old? Ma, have your children ever because from the problem she was mentioning you can imagine coming with a problem with your teenager and me as the doctor a behavioral doctor was asking if they have gone to the market because it was translating into the problems they were having they were non-rugged delicate 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 children she said ma in fact the way she did simple question have your children ever gone to any open market in abuja garaki market we say market, Utako market, and these markets are even cement, they are tired, they are not tired, they are, I mean, I mean with cement, it's not even mud. We have not even talked about markets like Nyanya market, where you have to wear boots, plastic boots, because of the mud. She said, no, ma, they have never said, wow, at 13, the child has never gone to an open market. You better show me the pictures, I want to see them. <laughs> I want to see them. <laughs> yes, we are having camp at Portacourt, Lagos. We're starting with Lagos, then Abuja, then Portacourt. The date for Portacourt is 30th August to 3rd September. They are the last. They are our baby camp. We have gone to Lagos before. We've been in Abuja all the all the while. We're coming to Portacourt for the first time. You guys better wake up in Porta Court. <laughs> okay, so that's that's about it. That's about it. Thank you so much. I told you from the beginning that I was going to pull your hair. I'm sorry that I did that. But I needed to because of the, 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 the gifts and the talents that are in your child that i needed to bring out no we cannot come to benin ma we can't go to all the cities because we want the opportunity for the children to move very soon my children will stop coming to abuja camp they'll go to potakot camp they won't travel with me they'll go on their own they will go on their own already my daughter is built for lagos she'll travel on her own i'm not going with her she'll get a ticket her father will pay for her ticket. She will do, she will do the whole process. If she likes, let her miss her flights, pressing phone or looking at window shop, window shopping in Abuja Airport. She will miss her flight. She will sort herself out. All I know is that she must appear in Lagos camp. The same way other people are traveling, let my own children travel. Lest I forget and I raise a delicate child. <laughs> Somebody call me out on that. I'm not going to raise no delicate, delicate children. So my children will also have to move to other cities to do camp. 
Let it not be that we must always bring it to your doorstep. No. Stretch is even an opportunity. Even if you live in Lagos, come for Abuja camp. If you live in Abuja, go for Kota. It's the same curriculum, same concept, same spirit, same environment. Everything is the same. They're just in different locations, happening at different dates and times. If you're outside Nigeria, the dates are out, start booking your ticket. I have the first foreign delegate. It's coming from the UK. The first foreign delegate is coming from the UK. Last year, we had people come from... It was an African con Liberia. Somebody came from Dubai. They were supposed to be doing holiday. They came for camp from Dubai. So don't sit down and wait for it to come to your zone. Don't sit down and wait for it to be at your convenience. No, let me encourage you, please. Go out of your way. And even if it's in your city, go to another city. Yes, it's starting on the 30th of August. It's five days. All our camps are five days. But for Tarkot, it's the only one starting on Wednesday to Sunday. But the rest are starting from Tuesday to Saturday. That's the way it runs. So you can see that everything is going to run the same. Thank you so much, everyone. I feel great actually having this class. <laughs> I'm feeling good right now. Whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook or you're catching a replay, thank you so much for coming around. Let me see if I can tell the names of people that have been here. Um, let me see. Let me see. I mean, I know I can see Adaku. Auntie Adaku, hello. Hello, Auntie Rosemary. Everybody's an auntie here. Hello, Shokwe, ma'am. Hello, Mrs. Ogochuku. Your children. Oh, we can take only 15 years. We can't take six and five. They're too young. Oh, my camp is rugged. Though. Even if you're 15 years old, if you don't prep him or her well, she will just start shaking after some time. So we usually tell the parents, prepare them. They're not coming to a spa. They're not coming to a cinema. They're coming to camp. They're not coming to watch anybody do anything. They're coming to do everything for themselves. Okay? Um, who else is here? If you didn't make a comment, I can't see you. I can, I can see Mrs. Donatus all the way from the east. Hello, ma'am. Hello, Medina. Hello, Blessing Few Aze. Yeah, these are teen mentors. I celebrate you. Some of them are also going to be on camp with me. I can see Mrs. Oima, I guess. Yes, Mrs. Oima, I can see you. I can see Prince God's Will. Thank you so much. On YouTube, I can see Omolayo Adekunle. Thank you so much. I can see Mr. Robert. Thank you so much, sir, for joining me. I can see Victor Kalu. I celebrate you. I can see Choma Ngosu. Thank you so much, ma'am. I can see Madam Princess Klimpat. Thank you, ma'am. I can see Tobe Chuku. Thank you, Uncle Tobe. That's um, one of our consultants. Thank you so much, sir. I can see... Mrs. Akuna Christie, I can see Paulette Lawrence. Thank you. I can see Mrs. Undubisi, Uche Undubisi. If I didn't um, mention you, it wasn't intentional. Thank you so much. And if you're watching a replay, I can see you watching it right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. I can see Omeri J. FM. I can see Usman Mala, thank you. Oh, I can see every one of you. Thank you so much. Admin number is already displayed right there. Send a message this minute. And guess what? As you are sending, call your siblings, call your friends, call everybody. Tell them that I don't want to raise any, I don't want any non any delicate child around me, any non-rugged child around me. Drag your ears, drag their ears. Let them come. So that when your child is being rugged, they will not be trying to discourage them. Ah, your own is too much. What is it, Seth? Just chill, chill. No chilling, no flexing on the journey to fulfilling purpose, on the journey to being a star. Let me let you go back to work. Have a great day. And trust me, I really and totally enjoyed this session with you all. You already have 10 kids waiting for better. Better for Tarkot in the bill. I have to start celebrating for Tarkot people because they have been so serious since from last year. Potakot. I got the venue for Potakot first. 
I got the venue for Port Harcourt even before Abuja venue because Port Harcourt people were so serious. So thank you, everybody. At Adaku, we hope to see you in Nigeria for camp. Or we we'll bring camp to you in the UK. Mm, mm, mm. We should do a camp in the UK for this year end, by God's grace. All right, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't feel like leaving, but I have to do enjoy the rest of your day. And God bless you. Bye. Bye.